first thing I want to thank you. First thing I want to draw out for you guys is essentially how we get people to make a decision to work with us and how the percentages work. Okay. So instead of being an accidental realtor and going out there and potentially getting a listing, I want you guys to go out there and work to get the listing. In order for you to get the listings that you want, in order for, and this works on the buyer side as well, by the way, right? <clears throat> you have to put in the numbers. The more people you meet, the more conversations you have, the more opportunities you create, right? So here's the thing, right? So we're going to create a problem, right? And so the problem that we are creating has to be associated to why somebody should sell their house. So there are several different ways you can go about this. The problem is my house is too big. The problem is I'm transferring jobs. The problem is um, my house is too small. The problem is my house is older and I want a modern, more, you know, a static house. Uh, the problem is I'm too far from work. The problem is um, I'm too close to family members, right? Like there's so many things that I've heard over the years from, from sellers that we're, there is a problem and we are to solve that problem. Now, the idea is for us to talk to the masses. So when you go on social media, when you go out knocking on doors, when you create that kind of stuff, you are the specialist in creating the solution for which problem, right? And so that's where we talk about, we can talk about how there are niches or riches in the niches, right? You guys have heard this before. There are riches in the niches. If you have a specific niche, then there are plenty of riches for you to dig into because now you know the problem for your niche and you can address that problem. Here's the crazy part. A lot of people don't even know that they have this problem, right? Like, so for instance, if you are in the state of Florida, did you know that insurance policies are going to go up in price? You probably did, especially if you own a home and you're like kicking yourself in the butt right now, right? However, did you know that there is a huge jump of almost 30% for non-occupant non homeowners in insurance policies, All right? So what's the problem? The problem is that those non-occupant homeowners may not be able to afford that property anymore. Now it's digging into the profits of what it is that they're doing with that property, whether they're renting it, on an annual basis, or it's an Airbnb, a short-term rental, whatever the case is, this extra 30% is going to be digging into their profits. And then let's say the stove breaks and you know things happen, right? Because when you're a landlord, things happen to your properties. And so you start thinking, okay, maybe this is a problem. I can't afford this place. I might have to sell it. Now, some people are looking at it as a bad thing. Other people are looking at it as a good thing. How do you solve the problem? You can solve the problem for two different types of people. One, I can sell your house for top dollar because there's a lack of inventory and I can help you get rid of this problem. You won't have to worry about the cost of this anymore. The second group of people that you can help solve a problem. Now, the new problem is there's not enough inventory. You can solve the problem by saying, hey, do you realize that insurance rates are going to go up by 30% for non-occupants? And many non-occupants will be putting their homes on the market coming up very soon. And so I can help you solve the problem of low inventory by focusing in markets that have a high level of non-occupants. You see where I'm going with this, right? Okay. So now there are going to be people who are aware of the problem thanks to you. And you're going to be able to get to about 30% of those folks. They're going to be aware of the problem, okay? The other, the other part is these folks are going to be aware of the solution. Now, those that are aware of the solution, watch how this is doing, those are about 30% as well, okay? Now, then, look, by the way, you, you made a problem and 30% of people got that problem. You created a solution, but only 30% of this group understands the solution. Does that make sense? It's not 30%, 30%, 30%, right? Then we're gonna take 30% of this group, it's the crazy part, right? 
And they're going to take action, but in another method, meaning they're going to hire another agent. They're going to list the property themselves, right? They're going to raise the price of their Airbnb to match the cost of what's happening in the market. They're going to put some fluff funds in there or something to figure it out, right? The other one is these folks right here. So about 7% of these folks will be convinced of your methods. How are you solving the problem, okay? Only 3% will be ready to go. Now, the reason that I bring this chart up to you before we get into the actual listing appointment, first of all, my listing appointment is like 15 minutes, okay? So even though we're going to cut into it a little bit, like if I just went to listing appointment, we'd be done already, okay? But the reason I want to show you this is because I want you to understand the most important piece to this, which is the number of people that you communicate with, you're going to get 3% of them, okay? That's the average. Now, when I say this, I mean when you're out there knocking doors or when you're out there posting social media ads or when you create a Google ad or whatever the case is. So you got 100 people that you communicate with. There's a good chance that three of them will be aware of the problem, aware of the solution. They will be convinced by your methods and ready to go. And they would have not taken action somewhere else. They're going to take action with you, not in another method. Right. And so, again, I want you guys to really adapt to the idea that significant amount of time and effort needs to go into communicating to get the most listing appointments ever. Right. And right now, I can't stress enough how important it is to actually get listing appointments. Like the stress well, level that I have there, it is to actually get listing appointments. appointments. The stress level that I have there is like ultimate high. It's ultimate high because I want you guys to understand that buyers are nervous. They're falling out of the opportunity to purchase because of interest rates going up. They're scared, whatever the case is. And yes, you can help solve that problem too. But the only way you can dominate a market, the only way you can get market share is with listings because you have control. I love when I see on the internet, somebody posting in one of the Facebook groups and they go, I just closed a deal and I got 2% on the buyer side and the listing agent got 3%. That's not fair. And I'm like, yo, you should have got the listing, right? You should have got the listing. Then you would have controlled how the commission was paid out. You have complete control. You have control of advertising. You have control of market. You have control on the signage. You have control on the pamphlets that go out. You have control on the postcards that go out. You have control of the effort. You have control of the neighbors and the neighborhood if you do it well. So this is what we'll do. We're going to go through the listing appointment the way I do it. And then next week, Michael, write this down because you know I'm going to forget. And then I'm going to be asking you, what are we doing next week again? Next week. I want to go through the step-by-step -step process on how, after we get a listing, what do we do? So I'm going to do like pre-listing, during listing, and post-listing kind of scheduled out for you and created, okay? And then here's the crazy part. If you attend my class, I'm going to, I'm going to create like a, a nice digital piece for you. And if you attend the class next week, we'll just put the Dropbox link in here so you can download it. OK, or the Google share link and you can just download it. But we're going to we're going to talk about what I do pre, during and post. All right, Pauline, you have a question. Let's let's do it before we get started on my little uh, acting gig here. First off, thank you for um, hosting this class. I really need it. Um, and secondly, attending obviously would be on, on Zoom, but I'm wondering if there's an opportunity to attend your class in person. Like, I don't know where you're located, but I'm just curious. So that's uh, a great question. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm in Miami, Florida. Okay. Where are you, where are you located? I'm in, West, I'm in West Palm Beach. Okay. So I'm going on tour. Um, uh, sounds funny. I'm not a rock star, but I'm going on tour for the next two months. Uh, so first week of 
September, all of September, I'm going to be out of the state. So all of September, I'll be uh -huh. in, in uh, Michigan and Texas. However, in October, I'm doing a full Florida tour. And my first stop is Palm Beach. So, okay. So just follow me on social media. Follow me on Instagram. Uh, Mike, if you could put my Instagram link up so everybody could just give it a follow. Because I'm going to be posting in there like crazy, obviously, to, to get people in the classes. And in those classes, it's called the, the Truth About Failure Tour. And we're going to be talking about a lot about foundation work and this kind of stuff. And that's going to be in okay. person. We're only going to have 100 people in a room per city. Okay. Um, I need your, your um, I'm sure Mike will post in here your um, social media. Yep. He there, just posted there it here. goes. Okay, I see. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. And Michael, if you could also post in there my... Uh, my link tree. So he'll Michael put my link tree up there as well, guys. And in the link tree, you can connect to everything there is that has to do with me, my YouTube channel, uh, my one-on-one -on -one coaching, my academy, everything's in there. Okay. Okay. Awesome. All right. So Carlos, you want to do this with me? <laughs> yeah, man, let's do it. Let's do it. You don't have a choice, Fire Carlos. You <laughs> all right so this is what i want to do guys i want to do a listening appointment with you guys all right and uh excuse me i want to do a listening appointment with you guys this is assuming i've got the appointment i'm showing up right now before we get into the appointment there's a couple ways i like to do this right i like the non-invasive approach and the non-invasive approach says, I don't have to come to your house first. I want you to get to know me first, right? And so before I get to Carlos' house, there's an opportunity for you to run a social media ad that leads to a landing page for a funnel that you have created that allows consumers to A, download a short book on how to list their house, okay? And B, schedule an appointment with you to discuss it with you via zoom now imagine carlos and i have this whole zoom conversation and we talk about how we market the house how to sell the house what tell me about the house carlos i want to know about you your family why are you guys moving all this stuff's crazy important by the way and i enjoy doing this because it is a non-invasive way of getting to know someone and then you would be surprised nine times out of ten Folks pick up their iPad or whatever it is, and they start walking you around the house. Oh, yeah, but look what I did to the kitchen, right? And so the second they do that, light bulb in a salesperson's head goes off and says they're fucking excited. They're, mm -hmm. they're, excited. they're showing me around their house, right? Non-invasively, right? Then, of course, the finish is, hey, Carlos, look, obviously, I appreciate your time and everything. I know that we can get this house sold for you. Um, Here's the last thing I need is to come by the house, really take a close look at it so I can give you true value for the home. How would you feel about that? You know, and if Carlos yeah. is excited, he's going to give me that yes. And now I'm going to come to Carlos's house and he's going to, we're going to really go through the listing appointment. Funny enough, this morning, there was a post put up by another agent that I know. And he said, how many of you go on a tour of the house first when you get to a listing appointment? Okay. So I'm, I'm watching a bunch of people in there and they're going, it's, it's time, this and that, blah, blah. And I'm thinking, number one, how in the hell are you going to talk about price with them if you ain't even seen the quality of the home yet? Mm -hmm. My, shit doesn't even make sense to me, right? Number two, why would you stop the flow of an appointment, the flow that the, the, the rapport that Carlos and I are building in the appointment to go, all right, let's pause here and now let's go look at your house. Now I'm killing the I'm killing the vibe. I'm killing the the run. We're on a run. I'm about to get him to sign. And then I go, let's look at the house before we talk about break. No. I walk in the front door. Thank you, Carlos. May I come inside? He says, yes. I go, I I have a bag with me always and usually carry some marketing material with me. Is it okay if I put this down somewhere? Absolutely. Come to the dining room, sit it down on the chair, right? Sit it down on the chair and I go, hey, Carlos, first thing I'd really like to do is take a look at your house. Now, here's the second reason. 
tour helps with value. And here's the second reason I'm walking around the house with Carlos. If I understand profiles, the disc profile, if you don't know what the disc profile is, go to my YouTube and pull up the disc profile video that we created or the video class that we created, okay? And with the disc profile, if I understand this, are they an influencer? Are they steady? Are they conscientious? Are they decisive? I can study how Carlos moves around the house, how he interacts with me, how he speaks to me, how he addresses me. Is he timid or is he forceful? Is he excited or, if he, or does he take a step back? Does he talk to me in my face or does he kind of hide in the corner of the room with his arms crossed? All of those give me indication of which profile he is on the, on the disc scale. Why is that important? How many of you guys have, or you can chat in the group right now, just write yes or no. How many of you guys have ever heard the phrase, mirror your client? Mm -hmm. Right? Mirror your client. Mirror your client. I cannot mirror my client if I don't know who they are. See, people look at this and when they, when they hear mirror your client, they dumb it down so much that they think it's, well, if my client leans back in their chair, I'll lean back in my chair. And if they sit up, I'll sit up, right? You know, and if they have water, I should have water too, right? Like that is the lowest form of mirroring your client. I am a high D, me. I am a 90%, I'm sorry, 99% high D. I am a 90% high I. What does that mean? That means that I make decisions quickly. I want to get to the point. Don't fluff it. I don't care about your marketing material. Just get to the point. Can you sell my house? But here's the crazy part. Because I'm a high I as well, I love to talk. If that's not evident today, right? I love to talk. Okay. Here's what I'm not. Steady. 7% conscientious, 3%. That's my disc profile. So if you start to get into the nitty gritty of your method to sell my house, I'm going to sleep on you. I just don't care. A highly decisive person does not care about the method. They care about the result. A steady or conscientious person cares very much about the method to understand how you get to the result. And by walking around and triggering questions with Carlos in the house, I'm able to understand what type of personality he has. And then I can add in the other stuff. If he leans back in his chair, I'll lean back in my chair. If Carlos gets up and says, hey, I'm gonna have a glass of water. Can I get you a glass of water? I'm gonna say, sure, right? I'm not gonna say, even if I don't drink the water, if he getting a glass, I'm getting a glass. Now, if Carlos says, I'm about to pour myself a triple, you know, vodka martini, do you want one? I'm, I might say no. Or I might Maybe say later. No. Maybe later. I'll tell him to hold off to celebrate and he signs the paperwork. Maybe I get Carlos to drink four, three or four of those and then he's really going to sign the paperwork, right? So, <laughs> right? So, go ahead, go ahead, Carlos. I was going to say something, David. You know, I, I like this approach because if, if they're receptive to your marketing material, either whether it's a physical form or a squeeze page or a free ebook or something, uh, and they're receptive to getting on a Zoom call with you, now you know you you cross that one barrier. Now you're able to get to know each other a little, ask questions and stuff. So if they're able to, if you're and all you're closing for is an appointment, so it's it's non-invasive. So when you go to that appointment and you're walking through the door. And, and they're allowing you in their house you know th those are already three yeses that you got right there so the next yep. part is just getting familiar with the house which is right you know uh mm -hmm. it, it, and and then asking for the sale so i i, That's I it. like this uh approach it's very um now like this you said really, basic. it's a really great approach because when i show up to your house after our probably like 45 minute zoom call when i show up to your house it's almost like we know each other like, I'm going to walk in the door. I'm going to go, hey, Carlos, how are you, man? Can I come in? Is that okay? You'd be like, David, so great to meet you in person. 
where's your puppy? You didn't bring the puppy, right? We're going to have real, like, that's going to be our first interaction ever in person, right? So world of a difference, world of a difference. This is what we're going to do. I want to do our listing appointment as if I didn't get that Zoom meeting with you, okay? I'm going to get the listing appointment as if you came referred by Jack. Jack says, hey, Dave, I got Carlos in Miami. I'm going to refer you him. You know, he needs to list his house. I call you, Carlos. I go, hey, how you doing? I, you were referred to me by Jack. Is it okay if I come over Thursday, right? So I'm going to go straight because it's a referral. I'm coming straight to your house. Or maybe I'm door knocking. I go, hey, Carlos, how are you? And you go, hey, listen, yeah, I'm actually thinking about selling my house. Well, is it okay if I come in now? Or would you like to schedule for Thursday at two? right? Just getting through the method, okay? I want to assume that we never had the Zoom call because I want to go through a full property. Is that fair? Yep. All right, so I'm ringing the doorbell. Ding dong. <laughs> I don't know whose doorbell. Hey, Welcome. Come on in. Hey, Carlos, how are you? I'm David Kurz. I'm with LPT Realty. I'm so excited to meet you. Is it okay if I come in? Sure, absolutely. Make yourself at home. Fantastic, man. Thank you very much. Hey, I've got this box right here and I've got this bag. Can I put this down somewhere? Yeah, sure. You can sit it right there at the dining table. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Hey, Carlos, look, I really appreciate you inviting me in your house. Very grateful. Is it okay if we take a tour of the house so that I can get a better understanding so that when we sit down and we discuss, I'll understand the things that you express to me better. Is that okay? Absolutely. I'd love to show you all the hard work that I've put in this house and all the money I spent on my kitchen and my my floors and my roof and the paint. Oh, you're going to love my house, David. I can't wait to share it with you. All right. I'm going to pause for a second. Thank you, Carlos, <laughs> for doing that. Number one, imagine how many yeses I've already got. Can I come in? Yes. Can I put this down? Yes. Can you give me a tour of the house? Yes. Man, I'm I'm ready. I'm just signed a freaking agreement already, my friend. On a roll. <laughs> so now here's the next thing. Carlos went on a tangent immediately, talking about how freaking awesome his house is and how much money he spent on it. What side mm -hmm. of the scale, Carlos? Are you a D, I, S, or C? Which side are you on? If I had to split this in two, uh, definitely on the D and I side. So. You're on the DNI side, right? Mm -hmm. Because the S and the C would never tell you that. Correct. The S and the C would look at you and go, sure, it's going to work. Right? And then what will happen is when they show you the light switch that they put in, they're going to say, yes, I replaced that light switch for that luminous light switch. You can control it with an app. Let me tell you. We had to take the old light switch out and I had to take the red green wires and I had to separate them from the black wire. And we had to shut off the power in the house. And then I had to watch a couple YouTube videos to really get that done right because it just wasn't wired for that kind of thing. So then I had an electrician come in and the electrician was able to run a new wire to the panel and really get the light switch in place. And you can see when you look at it, it's perfectly stable. It's centered and it looks beautiful. And watch this. I can access it from my app here. Take a look. You can download this app if you want. But of course, Carlos, it's not going to work until now I'm an s &C. Yeah. Right. And if you're a high D like me, you better take a chill pill, man, because you got to let that person talk. They need to explain the process. And you better keep it in mind, too, because when you come to talk about your marketing material and things, they need to understand that process. Right? Mm -hmm. okay, Carlos, we finished the tour. And I go, hey, Carlos, what's a great place for us to sit down and talk? Um, yeah, let's go sit at the uh, dining table where you left your uh, your bag at. Hey, man, that's fantastic. I appreciate it. Listen, um, I got a question for you. Why are you selling this house? Well, so we've been looking into a different area that, that we kind of like. And um, I know the market's been, been going up. We've put a lot of money into our house. And I think now is the right time to sell. Uh, the price is right. And since we're moving to another area, I think we could find a house that we can get uh, more bang for our buck and for less of a price. Where are you moving to, Carlos? 
Uh, moving to Fort Myers. Fort Myers. Oh, man, I love Fort Myers. I was just there a couple weeks ago. It's such a beautiful place. There's definitely a lot of development in Fort Myers. There sure is. A lot of growth. Have you found anything yet? Uh, we've been looking at several places. Uh, there's there's a couple areas we want to look further into, but um, okay. I, I think we can make a decision if everything right. works and out. Obviously, the reason I ask that is that when you decide to work with me, I have a tremendous network. Here, pause for a second. I didn't say if you decide to work with me. All right, unpause. When you decide to work with me, I have a tremendous network of real estate agents. I can have part of my colleagues take you out and look at properties up in Fort Myers. The benefit to that is that because they're my colleagues, I can be in high alert communication with them. So we can make a smooth transaction or a smooth transition from selling this house and getting you into the next house. Is that something mm -hmm. you would appreciate? Yeah, absolutely. We were a little concerned about, you know, the move and the timing and all of that and making sure that it's it's done the right way. So I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah. Gosh, listen, I totally understand. I was in the Marine Corps for nine years. I have moved so much in my life. Even after I left the Marine Corps, which by the way, I left the Marine Corps almost 20 years ago, I still can't stay stable in one house for three years. So, <laughs> you know, I completely understand where you're coming from because there is a finesse to closing on one house, moving into the next house. And there are different ways that we can create that finesse. And I'll explain that to you in a little bit as we go through the process of understanding. So who's moving? Is it just you and your wife? Uh, yeah, me, my wife, and my daughter. And the dog, of course. And the dog? Can't forget, dog. Can't forget the dog. <laughs> what kind of dog do you have? The rat terrier. A rat terrier. Nice. <laughs> I've got two dogs at home. I've got a really tall, tiny one and a really big one, right? Now, pause for a second. Why do I keep talking about myself? D's and I's love talking about themselves. They appreciate people who bring up similarities. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. right? That's the thing they won't tell you anything about themselves. You got to date for it. It's like, uh, you're right. But D and I's, they love talking about themselves. They can't stop. And so I want to show them that I'm matching him. This is that match that client moment through personality, through mental, through psychology. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, how old's your daughter? Uh, she's nine years old. She's nine years old, so she's she's still in elementary school, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we I've gotta got be by it but next to a good school. Too. That's very yeah, important. I've got four daughters. Um, I completely understand. I am a, a girl dad, like there is no other. Uh, but I completely <laughs> understand being in 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 a in a good school district. So we'll make sure that happens when I introduce you to my colleague in Fort Myers. Is that okay? Great. Awesome. So. Let me ask you a question. I know that you already understand some of the process of selling a home or purchasing a home because you bought this one. So at some mm -hmm. point in time, you've gone through the process. What did you love and hate about the process of purchasing this home? The stress, the unknowingness, um, you know, the uh, some of the pitfalls that could happen and or what if we you know, put a contract on the other house and ours doesn't sell on time, you know, things like that. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I completely understand that. So here's how we alleviate some of those problems for you. Number one, I have a very high level of communication in my team. What that means is we are going to ensure that we create a WhatsApp group named 123 Main Street, Guterres Family, right? And in that WhatsApp group is going to be me, my assistant, my showing assistant, my transaction coordinator, you and your wife. And every time something happens or every time we need something or every time we want to address you about something, we're going to put it right in that WhatsApp group so that we have a trail of every conversation that we've had. That way... I can show you or explain to you every single list, every time we show the property, what the results were, when I follow up with that person, what the results were, what we're hearing back and forth from co potential consumers. We're going to utilize that to be able to communicate with each other at a high level. So communication and concern and not really know what's going on will never, ever happen when you work with me. Is that something you can appreciate? Absolutely. 
All right, that's great. Now, the next thing I'll tell you is when we bring in that other agent in Fort Myers, we're going to create another WhatsApp group for that agent for that process over there. So that way we're all in cahoots with each other on how things are moving. And the last part is that because it's your house and your listing, you could create control when we receive offers. See, when we receive offers, we'll be able to review those offers. And one of our counters should include some time for you to move. So we can always get you a post occupancy on your property and you can close and potentially not have to move for another two weeks. Now you will have to pay for that time as it won't be your home anymore at that point. But still, you don't have to pick up and get stuck in a mid house before you move to the new house. It gives you the time, gives you the opportunity. Mm -hmm. The escrow company, our title company, they'll just hold those funds in escrow for you. So it's not like you have to make a payment to this to the new buyer, the new owner of the house. They'll hold those funds in escrow for you with a small deposit. And when you move out, you'll get your deposit back and the buyer who now owns the home will receive the rent payment. Is that something you think would be helpful to alleviate the stress of having to move from one home to another? Absolutely. Yeah, that makes me feel a lot more comfortable about the decision. That's fantastic. So listen, I could sit here and talk about myself all day long, all right? I've been in the industry 18 years. We have almost $800 million in sales in our books. Um, I've got a great team here in South Florida. I also have agents in Texas, Tennessee, uh, New York City, uh, Virginia, North Carolina. I'm like, I'm very well connected in our industry. And because of that, I know that we're gonna sell your house top notch. By the time we list this house, We'll have three websites up and running. We'll have syndication across the United States on this property. We're going to reach out to the top 100 brokers in the area to let them know that this property is for sale. And we're going to make sure that we address every single person that needs to know your house is for sale. And we're going to get social media and Google ads running to showcase your home. And the way that we're able to do this beautifully is... Once we sign today, pause, notice I said once we sign today and I pitched myself like a mofo, right? Mm -hmm. Unpause. Once we sign today, I'm going to go ahead and schedule with my photographer right now while we're here. I'm going to get him on the phone and we're going to go ahead and schedule a time. My photographer is going to come and he's going to take beautiful, exquisite, professional photography of your home and video surveillance of the home and drone video of the home. And we're gonna showcase everything that's close by. We're gonna make sure that we do this at a very high level. We're also gonna have printed material that we're gonna blast the entire neighborhood with, okay? So exposure is the key here. Marketing is the key here. And that's exactly what we're the best at. So now that you know this about me, cause I could keep going. Like I said, I could talk about me all day long. I would rather understand from you what you would like to know about us and our process. Um, well, the, are you going to put uh, the the house on on Zillow and and Trulia and Realtor dot com? Absolutely. Uh, I'm so I'm so glad that you asked that because when we syndicate across the United States, those are some of the top marketing sites that we syndicate to. See, Zillow, Trulia, and Realtor dot com. These are marketing sites that were created to market real estate. Right. And it just behoove of us to be on those top platforms. And by the way, if you Google me on those platforms, you'll find my pages and my reviews as well. Awesome. Sounds good. I, wh where do I sign? <laughs> you sold me three times already. I was ready to go. For <laughs> now, I'm going to pause this for a moment because I'm going to say something uh, important. Um, the fact that Carlos said, where do I sign means a couple of things. Number one, I understood he was a high D. I couldn't spend a lot of time just blah, 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 trying to show. And then we have this print facility in Central Florida and we get all this marketing. Uh -huh. going, right. It's unnecessary. I brought the box with me. I'm holding it. He knew it's there. He never asked me what was in it. Uh -huh. I simply just didn't care. He heard my process quickly, efficiently, and he liked it. Now, when somebody says, man, this is great, uh, you know, where do I sign? 
you don't go, you don't ever go, well, is there anything else you need to know? What? I've seen realtors do this. Mm -hmm. I've seen realtors ask a doubting question when they've already made the sale. Now, something else interesting that happened in this meeting, never talk to me about the price of the house. So we're going to go through that because I do want mm -hmm. to showcase that. But it, I've had sellers never ask me about the price of the house. So tell me, okay, this sounds great. Where do I sign? And when I put the listing agreement in front of them, it already has a price on it. And they go, ah, that price makes sense because they're already sold. And by the way, when they said, where do I sign? They committed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now let's go back. Let's pretend that you want to talk about price before the, uh, before the signing. Okay. Say, say something along the lines like, Hey man, I'm ready to sign, but let's discuss price. Yeah. I'm all, I, don't, I only want to sign if I get my, my price, you know, cause this is, it, that's important for us for the move. Okay. What do, you, what do you think the house is worth? Here's what we go. I'm going mm -hmm. to pause for a second. So okay. Carlos said a couple interesting things. He said, I'm only going to sell if I can get my price. And then he said, what do you think the house is worth? Now I've got two choices here. I could ask Carlos what his price is, or I could just go into valuation of the property. Here's what I'm going to tell you. A lot of realtors, a lot of coaches will say, ask them where they're at so that you can teach them where they should be. And personally, I think that's the wrong psychological piece. Personally, if I ask Carlos where he's at, he will voice out a number that may or may not make sense. So you're flipping a coin here, right? And now mm -hmm. number is stuck in his head more than it was when I ignored the question, the comment. Okay. So if he says, I want 500,000 and the property is worth 450, right? And I go, well, how much were you looking for? And he says, 500, that number's out there now. And I don't want that number out there. Mm -hmm. Maybe you flip the coin and get lucky. And he goes, well, I want 450 or nothing. And you go, well, I'm so glad you said that. Fingers crossed. I flipped the coin. It came out heads. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And so let's go back to this because I'm going to completely ignore the entire comment about if I don't get what I want, I'm not selling because that doesn't concern me. What concerns me is if we can agree on market value. Carlos, or unpause. Carlos, this is what we do. I have three comparative properties here, okay? Very similar to your home. There might be some minor differences. I've taken the liberty of highlighting what they were listed at and what they closed at which is important to know because if there's a big disparity, we have to figure out why, right? Mm -hmm. Then I've taken the time to highlight some of the differences and similarities between the properties. So let's go through this. Here's property number one. Same model as yours, same square footage, same bedroom count, right? Completely remodeled kitchen. I noticed yours was very remodeled. So you are most similar to this property. This property was listed for 500,000 and it sold for 506. Then there's this property. This property is about 600 square feet bigger than yours because it has an extra bedroom and bathroom. So although you're on a 3-2, this one's a 4-3. It's a bigger home than yours, but it's still in your neighborhood and still a decent comparable property because of the upgrades and things that they've done in the house. This one sold for 530. Then there's this property. Now, this property is very similar to yours. Same square footage, same bedroom count, same bathroom count. However, everything in the home is original. And this one sold for about 485. Right? Now we can imagine that it sold under five because it just wasn't remodeled. Everything was original. Looks like the homeowners were there for like 20 years. Okay. Mm -hmm. Never did anything to the house. Then you've got this bigger one that is remodeled, just like yours, your beautiful home. And it's sold for 530, but it is bigger, right? Mm -hmm. And then we come to this other house that's very similar to yours. It's sold for 506. So based on the information that I'm giving you, what do you think the house should sell for? Sounds like the house should sell for between 500 and 510. 
I'm so glad that you said that because I think that your house is in sell between 500 and 506. Mm-hmm. Here's what I'm comfortable doing. I'm comfortable putting this house on the market at 510 to create some sort of negotiation room. Mm-hmm. Would that be okay with you? Sounds good for me. Okay, great. So glad I prepared the contract right at that 510 number. I'm going to flip this over to you. I want you to take a look at it. There are highlighted portions on the bottom of each page and a long highlight on the back page. This is all for your signature. Go ahead and sign those spots and we can get started as soon as next week. Now, why do I need next week, Carlos? Because remember, I got to get my photographer and videographer in here. And the last thing I want to do is go to market with a cell phone photo. We don't want that. Mm -hmm. So it'll give you the opportunity to prepare the house for the sale. It'll give me the opportunity to create all the marketing material in advance. That's it. He signs the contract. Okay. Then I say, here's the seller's disclosure. Now in the state of Florida, we're required to do a seller's disclosure. I know some of you are not in Florida, but in the state of Florida, we're required to do sales disclosure. I give him the sales disclosure. Now he signed the contract. I take that. I put it in my bag. No backseats, right? (laughs) No backseats. You can't get this back. Okay. I, and I let them know, hey, I'm going to go ahead and take this. I'm going to sign it and have my assistant send you a copy of it, okay? Now, here's the seller's disclosure. On the seller's disclosure, I need you to be 100% honest, which also means that if you don't know, you simply check off, I don't know. My photographer, when he comes, he's going to pick this up and bring it back to me. So just have this filled out and ready by the time that my photographer gets here. His name is Gene Monez, and uh, let's give him a call right now. Hey, Gene. When's your next? I'm here. I'm sitting across from Carlos. He's ready to sell his house. Say hi to Carlos, Gene. Hi, Carlos. Right. What's and up, Gene? <laughs> and then I go, I go, hey, Gene, what's your next available photo shoot for a 3,500 square foot, three bedroom, two bathroom here in Miami? And he's going to say, you know what? I could be there Saturday at 10 a.m. I look at Carlos. Carlos, is Saturday 10 a.m. okay with you? Yeah, that could work. Okay, so we're going to make Saturday at 10 a.m. happen. And the only thing that would change that time is weather, right? If it starts raining, we're not going to do a photo shoot in the rain. We don't want your pictures to come out without sunshine, okay? Mm -hmm. Hey, Gene, lock that in. I'll text you the address shortly. Hang up the phone. I go, Carlos, is there anything else that you need from me before I head out? That should do it, man. Nothing. I get in the car. I sit in the driveway. Hey, Carlos, by the way, thank you very much for deciding to work with us. I promise you, you're going to have a great time. The only thing I'm going to request from you is A, you let my photographer get in here. B, you allow us to show the property as agreed. And C, you tell all your friends and family about me. Is that a fair trade? Oh, you know it. All right, brother. I'm out of here. See you soon. And I'm ghosted. Now, I'm out of that house. Me and the way my systems are and the way my team is built, that'll be the last time Carlos sees me because I've created leverage in my team. For many of you that are working as solo agents, you're going to see Carlos a lot, right? So photographer is going to go. Please don't go while the photographer is taking pictures. A, you're in the way. B, you're wasting time. You should be generating more leads, okay? You should be creating Mm -hmm. more business and more appointments like this one. So there's no reason for you to be there watching the photographer take pictures. Okay. Second, photographer is going to get back to you with the pictures and he's going to bring that seller's disclosure back. Take that seller's disclosure and load it up into your MLS. So that way it's an attached copy for potential buyers. All right. So have that ready to go for them. Create a marketing list. That means that it has your information on the top. You can do this on Canva and create all the special features on this house. Turn that into a PDF, load it up into the MLS as well. Because the MLS is only going to give you 800 characters and you need more than that to showcase a property. Go to chat GPT, right? Let me show y'all. Let's have some fun, guys. And the thing is amazing. Since since you uh, shared that chat GPT with me, I've never done a listing description on my own. <laughs> Even on my own house, it described my house so much more eloquently and better than I could have and, and had never seen it before. Let's check this out, guys. Now, um, if you're using 3.5, please stop, pay for the four, 
Okay, get ChatGPT4, uh, create a listing description for a house. Home has three bedrooms, two, two bathrooms, and is 3,500 square feet. The lot is half acre and wait, acre and has a pool with sun deck. Tiki hut with out, outdoor kitchen in the back close to shopping centers and the beach. Home is located in Miami, Florida. Limit the description to 800 characters. And that's important because if not, you're going to get a story. Yeah. <laughs> and there you go. Never write another listing description again because you're realtors, not writers. All right. Mm -hmm. I know once upon a time, so somebody told you I'm a po you're a poet and didn't know it. Well, stop that. Let's go ahead and use chat GPT for all of this. Okay. Now here's the fun part. I can make an adjustment here, use the voice of uh, Samuel L. Jackson. Samuel L. Jackson. That guy's the man. <laughs> Ever dreamt of living in a Miami vibe Samuel L. Jackson style? Say yes one more time. Drive into this epic three barrel two barrel. Come on, guys. Right? Uh, that's some gourmet shit right there. You saw that? That's <laughs> awesome. All right. This this is the wallet that says bad mother effer on it. It's your Miami dream waiting. Come on, guys. That's something you all day long. You know what I mean? So being able to create the descriptions like that, listen, guys, that's going to help you showcase yourself even better to this potential to the seller because the seller is going to go wow what a great website right what a great description this guy really did a great job right now mm -hmm. there are websites so remember i told carlos by the time we list this thing i'm gonna have three personal websites up and running one is through my chime account right so i use chime for a crm so i'm gonna get that landing page in there that one's gonna be tied to the mls so the description is gonna be pulled from there the other one is my listing power tool site, right? Where I can completely edit all the information, which means I can go back to chat GPT and I can insert the same description and I could say, add 800 more characters to this description, semicolon, paste the description. It'll give me a new one, a longer one that doesn't, I don't care if it fits on the MLS because this is for the website because I can edit mm -hmm. the website, right? Then the next website I'm getting is through Markaholics. Because I use Gene Monas for photography and videography, I receive all of my materials, my pictures, my video and everything through a landing page that he sends me. And in that landing page, I have a branded website and an unbranded website. And so I take the unbranded website, I put that on the MLS because that can be shared with other people by other agents, not worrying if my contact information's on there. And then I have the branded website that I'll send to everybody myself and use for marketing purposes, right? So that's three right there that I've built without building them. Hello, right? All right, so does anyone have any questions? 12 o'clock, man, we went long today. I'm super excited that we went long today, by the way. This was really great. Carlos, thank you very much for participating. Always thank a pleasure. You. All right. Uh, does anyone have any questions that they would like to kind of throw my way? Um, anything? 
I'm looking in the chat. I don't see anything in there. All right, guys, this is it. So uh, any questions that you have, maybe in the future, whatever, hit me up. Um, you know, again, I got to close with my pitch. We have our, our, our Freedom Achiever Academy. Uh, you can get the link to that by just going to the, to the link that we had in the, uh, uh, with my link tree and you can hit my academy. The academy is 149 bucks a month. It's got over 350 videos in it. It's incredibly insane. Sign up, get access, do the courses, answer the questions, learn a lot about sales and closing techniques. Okay. And marketing. Um, we're going to be adding video to it. So stay for the long run. Cause by the end of the year, probably have like a thousand videos in there. I know I'm crazy, but I've already written out all the links, you know, all the videos that I want to create and put in there. Um, 60 days from now, my new book, uh, the truth about failures coming out. And so for September and October, I'm going to be on tour in Texas, Michigan, and Florida talking about the truth about failure. So if you live in any of those places or you're close to it, I would love to see you guys present and in the audience. Follow me on Instagram so that you can learn about everything that I'm doing. Yes, I post pictures of my wife because she's hot. I post pictures of my dogs because you're cute. And uh, I don't put too many pictures of me unless I'm giving you some great information. All right. Thank you very much for coming over today. Love you guys. Be safe. Have a fantastic week. Thanks again, Carlos, for participating with me. Always a pleasure. Thank you, David. Great job. All right. Take care.